Hi folks, I'm Stefan Spencer, co-author of The Art of SEO, and I'm going to be talking to you about keyword brainstorming for the next uh, 10 minutes or so. so. As I said, I'm the co-author of The Art of SEO, co-author of the new book Social E-Commerce, and author of Google Power Search, all published by O'Reilly. So I know a few things about SEO, um, and I will be talking to you about the keyword side of uh, SEO now for the next little bit. So also I've got some other cool stuff going on, like I'm working on a SEO coaching and training program at scienceofseo.com, but enough about me. Let's go into keyword brainstorming. Now, a little case study here. My uh, oldest daughter, she started doing SEO when she was 14, and one of the first things she did was keyword brainstorming to identify what keywords to target. And uh, this is a screenshot of her website uh, back in the day. This was uh, neopetsfanatic.com. And Neopets is a virtual pet site owned by Nickelodeon, the TV network. Uh, back when she was uh, at you know, that age, uh, 14 and, and 13 and so forth, she was really passionate about Neopets. It was a very popular website, a virtual pet site where you could feed and care for and play with these virtual pets that were all digital online and could buy them virtual toys with virtual currency, Neopets, uh, Neopoints, I should say. And um, so she knew a lot of game cheats to get extra lives in the games and so forth. She knew all sorts of tips and tricks to earn extra Neopoints and so forth and so on. So she created a website, a, a WordPress blog, targeting some different keywords. Now she started out small because when you don't have any links pointing to your site, it's hard to rank for competitive keywords. So she went after not uh, very competitive keywords initially and then increased in her um, in, in the competitiveness as time went on and she built more and more authority in the eyes of Google. So she started to rank uh, and she targeted Neopets cheat as one of her initial keywords. The singular form is not very popular, it's not very competitive, so that was pretty easy for her to get on page one for. And she started speaking at conferences like uh, uh, Blogger, uh, Women Bloggers Conference, uh, she spoke at, um, uh, let's see where else, uh, the DMA Annual Conference, uh, DMA Annual uh, Direct Marketing Association Annual Conference, and uh, Y Pulse, a youth marketing conference and so forth. All those uh, opportunities to speak gave her um, also opportunities to get links because bloggers would be in the audience and they'd be so proud of her. You know, here's a 16 year old uh, blogging, doing SEO and then speaking in public. That was impressive. So she got newspaper articles written about her, blog posts, et cetera, et cetera. And of course those uh, generated some great links which further enhanced her SEO and gave her opportunities to go after more and more competitive keywords. So then she started ranking for Neopets um, cheats, plural. And then eventually she ranked on page one for Neopets, just the keyword by itself. So um, first thing she did though was she did keyword research and just kind of brainstorming, simply using the Google search box as her first port of call. So she just started typing in Neopets and saw what happened, right? But before we go into the tools and how to use them, I'm just going to um, point out here the right keywords to target are not just ones that are popular. They have to be relevant to your business, of course, right? And also they need to be obtainable or attainable in terms of high rankings. If you're never going to rank uh, on page one for that keyword, you shouldn't be targeting it because it's just kind of uh, pointless. It's, it's not going to drive traffic if you're on page five in, in the Google search results. If you target the wrong keywords, all your efforts are going to be in vain, so we want to make sure that we do this upfront work correctly. Now, I'm going to focus on the brainstorming tools uh, for this um, well segment. We're going to focus on uh, let's say uh, Google Suggest, Yahoo Suggest, uh, Yahoo Search Assist actually is what it's called, um, and also Suvel, which you'll see is a really amazing little tool, and it's free. So uh, we'll take a look at that in just a minute. And then uh, Google Trends. So those are the tools we'll focus on. Google Suggest. Uh, this was the first thing that my daughter started uh, using to figure out which keywords were 
uh, popular relating to Neopets. So she just started typing in Neopets and she saw that Neopets uh, avatars, and Neopets cheats, et cetera, were popular keywords. Um, and you'll, you'll notice here, if you look at the screenshot here, the name of her site was the Ultimate Neopets Cheats site, which meant that it was more likely that people would link with the name of her, her blog in their anchor text in the underlying words, so that would help her rank for Neopets Cheats. That wasn't an accident. She was specifically targeting that phrase, Neopets Cheats. So putting that into the title of her blog helped her uh, with the rankings for that keyword. So let's go to um, the Google search box. So I'm just going to go to Google. And what I've done is I've turned off Google Instant. So I'm not going to start getting search results as I start typing. Instead, I'll see a longer list of keyword suggestions. You can see Neopets Cheats is currently very popular. Uh, Neopets Avatars is more popular. Back in the day when she did this research, she actually found that Neopets Cheats was next in popularity after Neopets. That was a really great keyword at the time. Now, Neopets has died in popularity. If you uh, look at Google Trends and so forth, you'll see that the popularity has really dropped off over the years. But back in, let's say, 2004, 2005, 2006, super popular. It was a great site for a number of years to, uh, um, for her, her to target in terms of uh, uh, her uh, keyword focus. Okay, so let's uh, now look at, oh, and I want to also point out with Google Suggest that the order is also based in part by, um, uh, it's partially personalized so that, like, let's say that your geography will get, um, will, will play in here. If you search for uh, Italian restaurants, well, if you're based in New York, uh, then it'll probably say in the suggestions list, uh, Italian restaurants, NYC, Italian restaurants, Manhattan, Manhattan, Italian restaurants, et cetera. So just bear that in mind that this is not global. It's not uh, US wide or whatever. I don't know where you're watching this from, but uh, it is partially localized. So just bear that in mind. Also, uh, in order to turn off Google Instant, let me quickly show you how to do that. Uh, in the search uh, results, you're going to see the little flywheel icon. That's for your different search settings and so forth. So if you click on that and choose search settings, uh, turn off Google Instant by ticking this radio button that says never show instant results, and then hit save. So uh, very easy, and then you'll be able to uh, get a lot larger set of uh, search suggestions. Now let me show you a tool called Subal because this tool is amazing. Um, uh, I'm going to come back to Yahoo Search Assist in a moment. Um, actually, no, I'll show it to you now. So if you start typing into uh, Yahoo Search Box, right, some Neopets or whatever, again we're getting uh, suggestions, and they're different suggestions. See, we're we're seeing some uh, keywords in common, like Neopets Cheats and Neopets Avatars, but a lot of these are Neopets.com uh, URLs that are not showing up in the um, other uh, suggestions uh, list from, from Google. So getting a, uh, a set of, of results from, or a set of search suggestions from multiple search engines, such as Yahoo and Bing, as well as Google, really handy, right? So that's where a tool like Suvel comes in, S-O-O-V-L-E. Now, if I go to suvel.com and start typing in uh, Neopets, watch what happens. It does the auto-completion on whatever I've typed. Gives me some search suggestions, not just from Google, but also Bing, Yahoo, YouTube. YouTube is the number two search engine, so that's really uh, helpful. Also, Answers.com, Wikipedia, and Amazon, all simultaneously. Really, really cool. So definitely make this part of your wheelhouse as part of the, your, your, um, your arsenal of uh, weapons in, in SEO. So it, uh, it's a, definitely a go-to tool. Now, let me give you a, a hypothetical scenario uh, that will get you thinking laterally in your uh, keyword brainstorming. Now, this is going to be critically important. If you think outside the box, you think uh, a little further afield, you're going to have a competitive advantage against 
your, your competition. So let me give you a, a hypothetical example. Let's say that you sell baby furniture online, bassinets, cribs, and so forth. Well, the obvious keywords would be things like uh, crib, cribs, baby crib, baby cribs, bassinet, bassinets, baby bassinet, baby bassinets, uh, baby furniture, uh, furniture for baby, et cetera, et cetera, right? Those are the obvious ones. But what about not so obvious ones? Because your target audience in this case would be expectant parents. Well, what are expectant parents typing into Google, into Yahoo and Bing and so forth? They're typing in baby names. And this is very uh, obvious here from the Google, Bing, and Yahoo uh, search suggestions you'll see coming in from Suval in this screen here. You'll see that baby names is at the top of the list on all three engines. So we're not selling baby names in this hypothetical example, right? We're, we're selling baby furniture. You can't really sell baby names. But what you can do is offer something really valuable in the, in the area of baby names and then get the, uh, the prospect into your site and then do a soft sell and, and get them further down the, the buy cycle or the, the sales funnel so that um, they get in, uh, turn into a customer. So expectant parents are your target audience. What are expectant parents searching for more than anything else? Baby names. So we might not rank uh, initially for the popular term baby names because that's very competitive, very, very competitive. We might want to go after what I call torso terms first, which are not head terms in the long tail distribution graph, right? The long tail of keyword popularity would be long tail keywords, not very popular, pretty esoteric, uh, not uh, searched on very, very often, but maybe they are uh, high converting potentially, right? So uh, like a, uh, a baby, bassinet with a model number on it. Not a very popular keyword, but somebody with that kind of detail in their search query is probably uh, more likely to convert. They've, they're either looking for uh, to buy it or maybe they already bought it and they need to repair it or need to look up the manual or whatever and they lost it, right? So that's a, a very targeted search and potentially higher converting. Now, in aggregate, those long tail keywords could add up to a sizable amount of business. But um, what I'm talking about are torso terms, which are not the head terms like baby names, but ones that are pretty popular nonetheless. Not hugely popular, but moderately popular, like baby name meanings or baby name definitions or baby names, um, I don't know, cute baby names or adorable baby names or baby names that will get you your kid beat up in the schoolyard. Well, maybe that's more of a long tail one, but you, you're getting the drift, right? So target those torso terms first, just like my daughter targeted Neopets, Cheat, and then Neopets, Cheats, and then Neopets when she got enough authority built up from people linking to her uh, from authoritative sites. So that's, um, I think, a very very cool way to go. And, and also think of it this way in terms of when you are attracting those uh, prospects into your site. They're more like suspects. They're not even prospects yet because you don't know that they uh, need your furniture. They may have already outfitted their baby's room with everything. But what you could do to move them further down the, the funnel is offer them an irresistible offer that is um, going to get them further towards what your end is, your goal is. And uh, a quick example of that might be a, a, a checklist, a PDF downloadable checklist of everything you need for your baby, your new baby's room, like the essential nesting checklist. You put that over on the sidebar, um, and they're going to hopefully see that and get excited and uh, click on that, provide their email address in exchange for that free download. Of, and then now you have their email address, you have permission to continue the dialogue, which is going to be great because if they just hit the back button and leave, you have no way of ever reaching them again unless you got their email address uh, before they left. So the last little tool I'm going to show you here is Google Trends. And uh, what this does is it's a, a tool from Google that uh, provides uh, data on popularity of different keywords. 
let me show you this tool in action. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to google.com slash trends. And uh, let's type in a couple of keywords. So let's type in uh, Neopets uh, cheats and then a comma and then Neopets avatars. I don't know which one's more popular and to what degree and so forth. And also I want to see how that uh, popularity has changed over time. And you can see uh, Neopets cheats is in blue. Neopets avatars is in red. <clears throat> Holy cow, this is not good. If you owned Neopets, um, the, the site that Nickelodeon owns, <coughs> you'd be pretty unhappy to see this trend. All right, so this is the Google Trends tool. I can scroll down. I can see regional interest. I can see um, uh, rising terms. I can see top terms. And right, so click on rising, and I'll see uh, queries or search terms that are rising in popularity as well as the currently uh, top ones that are related. Pretty handy little tool. Uh, you can compare up to, I think it's five different keywords at a time. You just separate them by um, with commas. So this is a great tool to check different uh, verb tenses and singular, singular versus plural, uh, different synonyms, etc. If you've logged in, then you can, um, to your Google account, then you can uh, get other additional features as well. Like, for example, um, you can export this data. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll finish up here with, I've got a free uh, SEO uh, best and worst practices checklist. I'm happy to share with you guys if you just email my assistant, admin at stephanspencer.com. She will shoot that off to you. And also I have a, uh, um, a SEO metrics uh, hour-long webinar uh, we can share with you as well and um, a more expanded version of this PowerPoint deck uh, with uh, additional annotations uh, kind of an extended edition version so if you'd like those things just email my assistant admin at stephanspencer.com please follow me on Twitter at Spencer and also if you have any questions specifically for me uh, feel free to email me directly at stephan at stephanspencer.com Thanks for listening.